beyond. They went out of their way. They were willing to go to jail for this guy. Tear up someone's house to do that. So friends do the hard work. And I guess it would be kind of awkward and inconvenient to pick this guy up. The hard work of friendship is when you go, when you run towards someone's awkwardness. The hard part, the hard work of friendship is when it's really not convenient to be someone's friend. When it, you know, it takes some sweat equity, if you will, to be someone's friend. I think that statement's awesome. The best time to make friends is before you need them. Some sweat equity before you need them. Some help before. You know, so, so real friends do the hard work. It wasn't easy. I, I don't know if they had arranged some type of ancient pulley system. I don't, you know, maybe they repelled this guy down in, from the roof to Jesus. But real friends do the... How many, how, many in this room, how many in this room would rather have a friendship that's really easy and casual? It's not really hard work. Sure, we all would. All of us would. But sometimes... When it, that, that friendship that's awkward, or that person is awkward, or that's not really convenient for me right now, maybe that's what God is calling to do, do a little bit of hard work for some friendship. Hard work for friendships. You know, how many in this room have ever thought that you would die for somebody? Yeah. Some of you men, fathers already played out in your mind what you would do if a home invasion happened in your house. Uh, I feel sorry for the dude who comes into my house. I really do. I, I really do. I'm going to give him, like, you know, some help first. First, he has to get through the barrage of my dogs. Right? And then he's going to be so full of hair, he's going to be like, I'm out of here. You know? I don't know. I've thought through what we're going to do. There's cover. There's all kinds of things. And so, yeah, I'll take a bullet for my kids. I'll take a bullet for my wife. Right? So I'm willing to die for my family. I really am. So there's dying for someone, but there's also dying with someone. How many of you have ever had a friendship that you felt like you were like, they're going through some kind of crazy thing, maybe it's a divorce, maybe some kind of weirdness in their life, maybe they got arrested, something, and you actually were their friend, and you died with them through it. See, there's a whole difference right there. When you know, it's not really convenient to be the friend, when it's not really correct politically or socially, or maybe it's one of those things that, that um, you just won't look good in that light. And that's dying with someone. That's, we could die for someone. What about dying with someone when they're dying? What is that statement, uh, that, that quote, that a friend is someone that comes in when everyone else goes out? How many of you have ever had a friend come into your life when everyone else left? That's a friend. That's a friend that comes in. Stuff doesn't look good. I mean, we all want to look good, right? We all want to have good friends that make us look good. A real friend is someone that comes in when everyone else goes out. So friends carry mats. Friends do the hard work, sweat equity. Here's another one. Friends change us. Friends change us. I think it's Andy Stanley, great teacher, pastor out of Atlanta, that says that you, you will be changed by the friends you keep. The direction of your life is determined by the friends that you have in your life. Zig Ziglar says this way, you're going to be the same today that you are five years from now, except for two things, the friends that you have in your life and the books that you read. So friends change us. Friends change us, either for the better or how many of you remember your high school days? You're like, man, I gotta get some new friends. <laughs> Come up and be like, dude, I, I just, I, I, I gotta separate myself from this, this rabble. It's like every day I go into this high school, it's like five days a week, and like same thing, same thing, same thing, same people, same deal, same habit. So you said, I gotta get some new friends. And when you get some new friends, guess what? Your future changes. <laughs> yeah, it does. So friends changes. Show me your friends, and I'll show you your direction. I'll show you your direction. Friendships reflect your faith, and friendships always also refine our faith. Who's your friends? I, here, here's some friends I need. I need some friends, and I think you do too. I need some shared value friends. 
people that share the same values I have. I need those friends. Why? Because I like my values, and when they talk to me about their values, and we have this, this connectivity, if you will, this something resonates with people when they have shared values, the same shared. So I need shared value friends. I, I need unselfish love friends. Unselfish love means I, I love you unselfishly. I, those are the kind of friends who are going to pick up my mat when I need them. Unselfish love type of friends. How about deep loyalty friends? Deep loyalty friends. Um, why don't we say the eulogy now? Let's say the eulogy now to our friends. Instead of, you know, it's at the, it's at the funeral that we say the, all the nice things are said about people at the funeral. Wouldn't it be nice if, we, if somebody heard those nice, nice things before they passed away? Let's say the eulogy now to our friends, loyal friends, great words, people that speak positive things about catching us doing stuff right. That'd be awesome. How about this? Transparent friends. How you doing? Well, I'm doing great, doing marvelous. In fact, I'm doing better than you. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Just life, just, you know what? Living the dream. Eyes are dead. Living the dream. <laughs> you know? I think that phrase comes from Phoenix. I don't know where it comes from. I, I talked to folks from Phoenix, my, my relatives are like, How you doing? Living the dream. 192 degrees down. Living the dream. <laughs> I mean, like, transparency is so key for friendship. And it doesn't mean that we celebrate failure all the time, but we do celebrate failing forward. We do celebrate transparency and says, you know what? Not having a good time right now, a little stressed out, needs some prayer, need a little help. Hey, I really appreciate that positive word. I thank you for seeing my eulogy today. The good stuff comes out. So I need some transparent friends. Here's what I really need. I need some forgiving friends. Anybody vote? For that mm -hmm. circle of friends. Mm -hmm. Forgiving friends. You know what? If we hang around the table long enough, we're going to see each other's warts. I mean, I, I, if we hang around with each other long enough, we're going to see our weaknesses, we're going to see our fallacies, we're going to see our failures. And so that's why forgiveness is so very, very key for community. Two questions and we're going to close. Towards communion. Whose mat are you carrying? And who is carrying yours? Who do you have in your framework of friends? Who's in your framework? Friends carry mats. Friends do the hard work. Friends change us. Dying for someone, dying with somebody, yeah, means you're a friend. Jesus says, greater love has no man than this. to lie down his life for one's friends. Fight the good fight of faith. Why? Why? Because maybe my friend's miracle is on the other side of me fighting my own good about it. Maybe because I have faith, then my friends can be healed. Maybe because I have faith, then my friend's faith is lifted. That's why I need to fight the good fight of faith. Not just so I can be some big man of faith. I need to be a man of faith so that my friends can be looked at Jesus and says, when he saw their faith, he healed them. So communion really is all about communion. It's like a moment we mark once a month at Discovery Say, we are community. We have the same values. We're so thankful Jesus brought us into this community of faith, hope, and love. So we're going to receive communion. And uh, I've shortened this up, whittled it down, whittled it down just a little bit because we've got some stuff to do. We're going to say goodbye to James and Sika today and Juliet. And man, I don't want to do this. Don't want to do this. And so we're going to do it because it's, you know what? Saying goodbye, a good goodbye, is part of a good community. I love these kind of goodbyes because we pray for, we send off. And a lot of you guys don't know this, but uh, James and Seeker, really, I gotta say, I don't know if discovery happens if they're not in, in this place. 
And so <laughs> they have to move to Tucson, which the weather is awesome down there right now. <laughs> Live the dream. <laughs> so uh, we we got a gift for you guys, and I don't know it's it's filtering around here somewhere. Uh, and whoever has the waterproof Bible, come on up, bring it up here. Do four is once you come on up. We want to pray over you. So I know you have a waterproof Bible, but it's worn out because I was looking at a photo of you hold your waterproof Bible at Lockett Meadow and things just worn out. And I know this isn't blue, but better than that, this has got writings from your church family. It, it could be your coffee table Bible, you know, like when people come over, you usually see the big family Bible, this would be a waterproof Bible. Or just keep it in the shower. <laughs> and then, so we want to give this to you. And then we want to give you a map of Arizona <laughs> so you can find your way back here. We want to give this to you. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm not going to get into the personal stuff here, but uh, these guys mean a lot. They're really good. And uh, I remember the day that Sika in the old church asked me to pray for her boyfriend James and I thought who is this James who is this James and I said well he's got a good biblical name so I'll pray for him and I remember the first time I saw James back then I think you, you still have the dreads the, you know the dreads and he, the first service he came to was a water baptismal service and he was sitting on the front row, and he gave his heart to Jesus that day. He said the Holy Spirit came into his heart. So we want to uh, just hear from them for a minute. I know that they're really excited about talking. But uh, maybe tell us a little bit about where you're going, maybe what discovery means to you a little bit, and, and then we'll pray for you, and we'll have to Well, as usual, Steve, with the surprises, maybe I'm going to say something. Um, well, we're moving to Tucson to be closer to our family. It's, it's pretty tough doing this, uh, this thing on our own. So it's going to be real good. We have uh, you know, Sika, or Juliet's grandma and grandpa and aunts and uncles and cousins up there. So that's going to help out a lot. And uh, I already got a job and we found a place to live. And so the transition's been really smooth. Although the timing wasn't necessarily part of our plan, but again, none of this is our plan. And, uh, <laughs> Discovery has really uh, meant a lot to us over the last three years, four years. And, uh, you know, mostly how, how real it is. And the songs and the people are all about loving each other. There's never been any judgment, I feel like, cast on anyone by anyone. And I feel that that is so important. And everyone is just here to love, love each other, and, and love God. And it really is that simple. And I think it's just so beautiful to see all the people here doing it. And uh, putting so much importance on them. But then also helping each other, because life is really hard. Life is hard. I don't care who you are. You know, harder for some than others, but life is hard. And so everyone coming together and helping each other and supporting each other, then also having the courage to come here and, and let it out and say, yeah, I am having a hard time. And accepting, accepting the prayers of your friends, accepting the help from your friends. But the first step is to just show up here and say, yeah, I'm having a hard time. And then knowing that you have the community here to support you for that, it's, uh, it's something really special, and you don't just find that anywhere. So, uh, you know, you all have something really special here. It's really great. And uh, it's, been, it's been really beautiful to be a part of. Uh, thank you, Steve, for doing this. And, uh, you know, it's not, what you're doing is not, 
you know, when we were over at first assembly, and the average age was like, what, 75? <laughs> <laughs> and then now coming here, you know, but you know, you have a congregation there. People will come. People will give faithfully and show up. And you know, you have people doing Bible studies. You know, at five in the morning before service. And, but you, you need to reach. You felt the need to reach a whole different classification of people. And you've done it. You've done it. And it's hard. I get it. I see that. I know it's not growing as fast as you want it to, but it's so worth it. It's so worth it. And you've touched a lot of people that you've reached a lot of people that um, you wouldn't reach them. So uh, that's how he got me in the first time I went to service. Oh, she's here. <laughs> church the first day that I came was six years ago and I'm a dancer for those of you who don't know and the very first day Diana Brown yeah, uh, was yeah. doing a, a dance piece yeah. improvisational dance piece to some worship music and I was like oh yeah this is the place for me this is so awesome I could feel the Holy Spirit and I was hooked and I kept coming faithfully for couple of years, but I wasn't very social, um, and James doesn't know this, but every day, I would just, not every day, every Sunday, I would come down and sit, and nobody would sit next to me here, but I would pray for the seat, that one day, my husband would be sitting next to me. you, <laughs> and um, it was a while, and we lived very close to the church, and I'd bring some friends and stuff like that, but he never really um, wanted to go. I'm sure you guys know what that's like to have friends, they're like, okay, you can go to church, but it's cool. Um, and then my friend Tina, who had, she was a fire dancer with a blue hoop, and she had pink hair, and she would come, and she decided to accept the Lord into her life, and she got baptized, and because of our friend getting baptized, James decided to come and felt the Holy Spirit for the first time. And Steve was talking about a, have a soup pie. And so then James was hooked, of course. He's like, oh, have a soup pie. I've got to go. I like this church. <laughs> and so that's uh, how James started coming. And then James got baptized. My dad started coming to church. <laughs> Dad accepted the Lord and got baptized in the lake, and um, it's just been so beautiful to see this experience, you know, seeing the people around me affected by the Holy Spirit being here, and that is so special and so important for a church and for people to be able to accept that, and to be able to permeate it, and I think that is the most important part. And you facilitate that. Pastor Steve, we love you so much and we're so grateful for everything that you've done. And all the things that we don't see that you do behind the scenes, we pray for every one of us. So we thank you.